This episode, we take the straight and narrow Stuart Highway from Mbundwa country in the centre to Larrakia country in the north. Our first stop was at Aliron, which had a unique draw card to divert us off the highway. At 17 metres tall, the amateur man certainly is big. He's named after Charlie Quartpot, who was an important amateur leader and rainmaker for the area. Built by Mark Egan in 2005, with the female Charles statue a few years later, these sculptures were intended to entice tourists into the town. So be sure to drop on in on your way through to the bigger centres. have a story to tell, or a thousand. If only those walls could talk in words. The day was getting on, so thankfully our last stop was just down the road. The beautiful and iconic Devil's Marbles Hotel, with a sunset from heaven. It's a little oasis in the desert. Hey, what do you know? That's where we were last weekend. The big day out at Ormiston Gorge. We're at the beautiful Devil's Marbles and it is so windy. The wind has gone all night. Relentless. We ended up changing the direction of the car and put the rooftop tent down on a 45 degree angle. Sometimes you just have to bow down to Mother Nature because she's going to do her thing. <laughs> and so it was that iconic wind which wore down the molten granite over 1700 million years ago was our calling card to keep on moving. So we decided to leave the secrets of Kalu Kalu for another time. We continued north along the Stewart Highway, through Tennant Creek and on to Daly Waters for a bite to eat. Now you've probably heard of Daly Waters Pub or even been there for a feed, but if you haven't, put it on your itinerary because this quirky pub could keep you and the Billy Lids entertained for hours. From horses at the bar and almost a century of tourist memorabilia, to dogs, rogue goats and pet buffalo, this place is sure to serve you up an experience you won't forget. Dad, if you're watching this, I reckon you'd have a field day here at Tim's Junkyard. He seems to have quite the penchant for motorised things. I mean, the place is full of old cars and motorbikes, including these Indian classics, which I know you'd love. But it's the antique barbed wire and fencing tools which I reckon would have you staying for another beer. Amazing place to come and see for a small cost of three dollars, <laughs> and the food is good at the pub. <laughs> Bloody good, bang up barrier, good spot. Daily waters, beautiful. Where 
Country road. Taking a nice leisurely walk into Elsie National Park. a load of fun those kids were from Nuka. Nuka. they got to go on this outing today because of good school attendance they had a ball it was pretty fun but yeah all local ish kids anyway from the area super duper and soon enough we were back on the road again um, I mean water we met up with a maiden Catherine who took us out on his boat to have a look around and through the beautiful river that runs through Jarwin, Dagaman and Waterman country. On this particular trip, we didn't catch much, just a stray lure for the tackle box. But hey, all in all, a great morning. dry season, be sure to do yourself a bloody big favour and head on down to the Pop Rocket Cafe where they've got true blue customer service and damn good daiquiris. best al fresco cafe experiences in the country we soaked up the ancient waters at the catherine hot springs this tour of the underwater world was one that we won't forget in a hurry another day another walk this time we're off to nipmaluk gorge for sunrise see you at the top absolutely beautiful just being able to Witness the, the gorge, the river, the sunrise. And what better thing to do on a Monday morning than to watch the sunrise from a rocky outcrop, then bushwalk it back to camp. We sure are lucky here in Australia. Ha, ha, ha. 
grab a couple of mangoes for the road. We've got a good healthy lot of mangoes here. I reckon our immune system and vitamin C levels are going to be right up there. Like they should be. That night at dinner, we had a very special guest from Central Australia. Asham, he's got something to show you. Oh, fuck. Are you good, eh? Yes. <laughs> What's his name? Ron. Yeah. Is he the chef? Yeah, not long ago. You're on? <laughs> it appeared that snakes were to be our protective guard whilst on Jarwin country, and we sincerely thank the ancestors for their offerings. It's pretty hot and sweaty here at Katakata Caves this morning. The tropical cast cave system started its humble beginnings 500 million years ago and continues to erode through the process of natural chemical weathering as carbon dioxide in the air mixes with rainwater on the ground below, seeping into the cracks and weathering the limestone. At 15 metres below the surface, this cave has all the usual formations of stalagmites, tides, helictites, shoals, flowstones, rim pools, straws and columns many of which were used as shooting practice by the European settlers in the early 1900s. It also has six of Australia's eight cave-dwelling bat species and a rare blind shrimp, hence why no mining operations will ever be allowed here. These caves also have evidence that they once carried fast-flowing heated water. Yep, they were thermal springs, and it still floods every wet season so all the lighting is removed and put back again in the dry season. So if you're a Sparky and want a cool gig, hit them up. You never know your luck. on Tularakir country was met with some very early wet season rains. Nevertheless, we still got out and about and enjoyed what sunshine was still on offer. And it looks like the travelling jackaroo did too. Sam is travelling Australia with his tractor, dog and RFDS plane, as you do. Check him out on socials to learn more if you'd like to support his cause. And now that we're in the big smoke, we're lapping up everything that's on offer. First stop, Mindel Beach. Mindo Marcus, absolutely beautiful. Get a great juice and even better haircut. <laughs>
only just arrived at Matt Wright's Top End Safari Camp. 